Afternoon and welcome back to yet another cook along with the Shropshire Lad. I'm just here at the Hundred House Hotel, uh, which is a good friend of mine's uh, place. I've been around this place for an awful long time. Uh, Stuart, the head chef, is used to be my well, I used to be his lodger, um, and this is kind of feels like my second home. I learned a huge amount from Stuart about cooking. Um, and yeah, so I'm here today to, well, to cook this pizza. Uh, Indian pizza, well, it's an Indian pizza. Um, it's something I've sort of created myself. I'm essentially gonna keep teach you how to make two dishes and then put it together to make one pizza. So we're gonna make a dal, a very simple dal, which is gonna replace what would normally be the tomato sauce. Uh, and then we're gonna show you how to make naan breads, the, the naan breads that I usually make anyway. Maybe they're not, well, they're traditional, maybe they're not. I don't really know. I know they work for me. Uh, so we're going to make those and then uh, we're going to combine the two, add some cheese and we're going to chuck them into the wood oven here. As you can see, that's all fired up, ready to go. Um, and the reason, okay, you see the fire's ticking away in there nicely, getting super hot, ready to cook these awesome pizzas. Um, the reason, let me just adjust my camera ever so slightly. There we go, I think everything's in now. That should be good, we still see the oven? Perfect, right. The reason I'm here uh, is basically because tomorrow, these guys, after months of the hospitality industry being completely shut down because of COVID-19, these guys are opening up again and they've got a brand new menu and half of it is gonna be using that bad boy and Kadai's, which you all know that I love. Um, you know, me and Stuart have cooked a lot together on these Kadai fireballs and so, yeah, I thought I'd come down here and just, it's a shameless plug on this place because it's amazing. Uh, you need to get yourself down here, get it checked out, get booked in. I think they, they're fully booked for lunch already tomorrow. I'm going to be here at 12. I got myself in early, but I think they've still got um, room in the evening, although I'm not sure the fire kitchen's running in the evening, but it's going to be running every Saturday, street food style, fire food. Get yourself down here. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, that's enough talking about that because I don't want to keep you know, any of you to leave me let's get started on uh, what we're gonna make today so I've got as you can see over here this is really weird because it's far it's really far away but it looks like my hands almost going into the fire I like that um, anyway yeah so I've got some uh, some water ticking I'm gonna go around here now um, so some water ticking away about 500 mils of water in there uh, and it's just ticking on the edge of that fire um, so it's just simmering. I'm just moving it across now because the fire's starting to die down. And that's what you have to do with fire cooking. You, if you're doing it in your house, you want this on a nice medium heat and you just want the water simmering. Uh, find my ingredients. Okay, so we've got some red lentils. So all we're going to do is drop these red lentils straight into the fire. Into the fire. Don't put them in the fire. Put them into the water. Okay, no salt or anything at this stage. Let them cook a little bit because I find that if you um, if you put salt too soon, then they kind of toughen up and it takes them longer to cook. So we'll add a little bit of salt later on, or I'm going to actually add a stock cube in a little in about ten minutes. So we're going to just get that get it ticking away, get that moving, and at the same time, I'm going to get another pan on the fire. Got it here. Here it is. Hide it behind the sign. Get that up to heat, and we're going to start to make the the base of the dal. So, like all good curries, we're going to start. With a couple of onions because I don't think I know of many curries where you don't use onions they are the base of the flavor and as I've always said throughout this in order to get the best out of your onions you need to make sure you cook them down so that's the first thing always for me that goes into the pan we're going to get them really really sort of uh, almost blackening hopefully provided that fire is going to play ball with me the rain is sort of just trying to sort of ruin my day but hopefully it's gonna stay off. I can't believe it's July. And if any of you saw me at the Reekin this morning on my uh, on my Instagram, cooking, cooked some uh, some food on top of the Reekin uh, for breakfast, and the photos might look great, and I was like, oh my god, that looks amazing. Well, actually, it was chocolate down with rain, a bit of a nightmare, and I didn't expect it because it's July, it shouldn't be happening. Although we are in the UK and. These things happen, don't they? But yeah, anyway, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get through this without me getting too wet. Making bread, which we'll be doing when we make the dal, isn't the easiest thing to do in the rain, because flour and rain don't really mix, but we'll see. It's all good fun. And do it, why not do it live as well, Adam? Great idea, isn't it? Anyway, right, 
skinned onions here. So I'm just going to go, I like it, always like a bit of texture in my dal, so I'm just going to go lengthways with the onions. Don't have to have tiny little bits, it takes up your time as well. You don't need to be wasting time on that. These get, once, by the time we've cooked them down as much as they need to be cooked down, they, you know, you're hardly going to notice them anyway. So cutting them really small just means that they just get lost. And I think that they need to feature, especially as this dal, although the leftovers of this dal will be great tomorrow if you want to make some extra naan breads, um, this is, remember, this is actually the base of your uh, pizza here. As in, not the, the pizza base, but as in the base of the, the sauce base. So having some texture in it is always going to be good. Okay, so we've got two onions chopped there. They can go straight into the pan. That looks like it's quite hot. Yeah, so we've got a sizzle on. That's great, what I wanted to hear. As always with the onions, we're trying to draw the moisture out. And what draws the moisture out is salt. So put some salt in with your onions at this stage. Okay, probably two pinches. Uh, let's get those working round in that pan. These are looking lovely. Lentils, that's brilliant. They're ticking away nicely. Right, so... Whilst they're going, I'm going to go move on to the ginger. So you've got a thumb of ginger here. I forgot my teaspoon today, which is annoying because using a teaspoon is the best thing you can do for peeling ginger, which I found out recently from one of my followers. Uh, and I haven't looked back until I forget a teaspoon and I'm working outside. And I'm not, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything today because normally I'm at home and I can just, if you've watch, been watching a lot, I just leg it and go into the house and get whatever I need. Whereas, I can't do that here because I'll be walking around the hotel. I know that these guys are all working frantically getting ready for tomorrow. I'll be walking around saying, got a teaspoon and nobody's really interested in helping me. So well, hopefully I've got everything I need. Okay, so just gonna chop this ginger up into sort of matchsticks, lengthways, and then across the matchsticks into little tiny cubes. I'm going to hold these back for a minute until these onions are getting closer to where I want them to be. There we go. Give that a little bit more of a chopping. That will do me. A bit of texture again is never a bad thing. Garlic, you know, this is definitely going to go in later on rather than straight away just because. As I've probably said, if you've been listening in, in the previous weeks, garlic, as soon as it starts to sort of caramelise in a pan, that's when you find that it becomes quite bitter. And so garlic always gets added at a later stage. Unless you're cooking something really quickly, obviously. But this is kind of a slower process. I'm hoping that this dal is just going to be ticking away in a minute whilst we kind of make the... the, uh, the the um, naan bread uh, and by the time we made the naan bread it's ready to go on the top of the pizza right so side of the knife up up we go for three cloves three decent cloves of garlic love garlic in my nut in my dal those onions are looking good let's keep that moving and it looks like with lentils are doing well as well. Perfect. So I should have said 250 um, grams of lentils. You're probably looking at around about 600 ml of water. If they look like they're getting too thick and then, then you test them and they're still hard, just add a little bit more water in. It's quite simple. Um, we want it to be sort of like a thick soup by the time it finishes. The lentils will almost break down to nothing. So just keep them ticking away. And then what's going to happen is, all this stuff we're doing in the pan, the onions, uh, the garlic, there's going to be some tomatoes going in there, some spices. All of that will go into the lentils at the end, and then we've got, we just basically leave that, and that's a dal, that's how easy it is to make a dal. And it's what, if you're, uh, you know, over in India, whenever I've been, it's like a staple. Everybody just eats dal and bread. So this is like an everyday thing. I'm sure they don't turn it into, into pizza. Um, but, you know, it's cheap as chips. I mean, I think that bag of lentils cost me 50p. 
and it's insane flavour. So it's a really cool dish. Okay, garlic chops, good. Right, let's see where these onions are at. They're almost there. They're brown enough for me to be thinking about putting in the ginger at least. Let's get the ginger moving now. I'm going to leave that garlic out a little bit longer to stop that caramelisation of the burn. Ginger is a little bit more robust and won't cause that bitterness. Keep that going. Needs a tiny bit more oil in there. Stop that's all good though. Okay, that's it. Now we're cooking. Cooking on fire. And the fire's dying down, but that's good because I don't really want this to be, this isn't a dish that needs to be cooked ferociously. It's not one that you, you're going to have it on a medium heat, as I mentioned. You know, uh, it's not something that you need to have raging. So cooking on fire is quite interesting because obviously you can't, you need to be hot, you need to constantly keep it stoked. I'm going to almost let that just go out as, as, we, as we continue to cook. Um, right, I've got some tomatoes. I said, if you don't run off the ingredients list, I said to use two to three tomatoes. I've actually got uh, plum tomatoes here. And so um, I've got about 15 of them because they're only these little baby ones. But basically, you're just going to chuck them, cut, cut, yeah, cut them, in, I can't speak, cut them up into, chunk, into chunks that are about a centimetre wide and they're going to go into the onions and then that's a good time for us to add our garlic because the moisture that's going to come out of these tomatoes is really going to help uh, to stop that garlic from burning so i'm just going to chop these up just roughly skin in i'm not messing around skinning tomatoes i haven't got time for that uh, you won't notice anyway especially when it's on a pizza these tomatoes were rescued from the food hub in Shrewsbury, which is an organisation I work with a lot, um, who just get rid well, they redistribute food that's being thrown out by supermarkets that's still perfectly good for human consumption, but just for whatever reason the supermarkets don't want them. For some reason, for the last three, four weeks now, I've had tons of tomatoes from them, and they're like always top quality. I really don't understand what's going on, but I'm not complaining because they're free. And free is the best price for anything. You ask me? Those onions are looking bangers. I'm going to show you where they're at in just a sec, just in case you're doing this at home and you've got no idea when to sort of start adding everything else. I'm just going to hopefully this isn't too hot. No, that's all right. All right, so if you can see that, they're browning. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. All right. So that goes back on the pan. Right. Those lentils are looking perfect. They're going to almost just sit. In fact, it's time now. The lentils, I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm looking for, the lentils. So they've gone to this kind of like sloppy consistency now. A little bit of liquid in there. Not too much. Good time to add a stock cube. I didn't have any vegetable stock cubes because it's chicken stock. Don't tell anyone, there's no veggies here anyway. But should I crumble that in? Just going to give it a little bit of salt and a bit of extra flavour. I'm going to add more salt to the actual main dish at the end anyway, so I need to worry too much about putting loads in. Work that in. Okay, right, into the pan then. We're going to go with the garlic and the tomatoes. Lovely. Right, uh, we'll get this lemon chopped because then hopefully I'm not going to need this board again. That. That. Right, let's get these tomatoes moving. Lovely. You're almost making a kind of like a, a mushy sort of thick paste here. Because it's going to go into the dal. Oh, the eyes. Smoke. Okay. They're breaking down now nicely. Just what we want. Okay, so we're going to go with some spices now. So, starting off with about a tablespoon of cumin seeds. Again, this is gonna, I like to use cu whole cumin seeds rather than ground cumin a lot of the time just because it gives it extra texture. Um, get them into that oil and they'll really sort of start to release some fragrance, which is what you want. And then we're gonna go in for a tablespoon. I forgot a spoon, so I'm just, get, just guessing this. A tablespoon of ground coriander. Yeah. 
I'm going to go for a teaspoon of chilli powder. I don't want it to be too hot. I'm going to put more chilies in later. And then a tablespoon of turmeric. There we go. And then we're going to work that in. I'm going to add a tiny splash of water at this stage just to help those spices not to burn. Just a tiny bit. And I'm just going to work all that together. In fact, I could have used lemon juice at that point. Never mind. Yeah, we're going to get some lemon juice in there as well. In a sec. Oh, that's looking great. Fire is going out rapidly, but that's okay because we're nearly done. Right. Okay, so next thing lemon juice. Juice of half a lemon. It's going in. Lovely job. A little bit more uh, of my stock cube there. Just randomly knock it about. Alright, this is looking awesome. Okay, so I'm going to leave that ticking for a second. In fact, no I'm not. What I'm going to do is all of this sauce. Just made. So there's your base for your uh, dal. All you need to do now is tip that into your lentils. Side. Very low heat now. Just let, mix all that together and just let it tick. We will add some spinach to this a little bit later on. But if we put it in too soon, we lose some of the vibrancy. Um, so about halfway through making the dough, I'll then add that. I'm going to move that over that bit of heat there. That dal is looking absolutely spot on. And as you'll see, it doesn't take very long. I'm going to have a little taste test, see if you need any salt. That doesn't need any salt, that's absolutely perfect. Because I added salt to the onions at the beginning, and a stock cube, that's generally enough. Let's have a little tidy up, so I'll get rid of that. We will need that again at the end. Next set, naan bread. So, my version of naan bread. Let's just clear this down. Oh, sorry, one more thing. You can add that now, it's not a problem. Just a squeeze of tomato puree into, probably about a tablespoon of tomato puree into that uh, dal there. Work that in. The colour of this is amazing. I'm just going to show you very quickly. Now, this is going to make seriously vibrant pizza, man. Look at that. Oh, yes. Right, that dal looks bangers. Right, so happy with that. Okay, bread flour then. So I'm gonna go for, I'm making it a, a lot here. So I think I've told you guys 500 grams. I'll go for more like a kilo. Save a little bit back. If you're doing this youth club guys, don't use it all. Save yourself enough for rolling out, yeah? So into the bowl goes that. This is where I really, really, really need a spoon. I refuse to run off and grab one, so hands are going to get dirty. But we're going to go in with some salt, a tablespoon of salt, baking powder. This is going to help it to rise. So there's no yeast involved in this. Real easy recipe. About a tablespoon of that. Get rid of that out of the way. Oh, I'm just going to check on my fire here, actually. Let's check if it's hot enough. Right, I'm going to put some more wood on, otherwise pizza ain't going to cook. So I'm just going to put a few more pieces on, ready for when we're going to make our pizza. That'll do. And maybe one more for luck. Quite a big oven this, it takes a bit more fuel than we used to. Okay, all back on, slightly ajar, gives us a bit of a draw, gets the oven nice and hot. It's been going for about an hour now, so the floor should be mega, mega hot. Okay, right, next then. Going to go in with around about 200 mils of yoghurt. This is going to make a really soft dough. Really, really helps. 
okay? And then I'm just gonna start working that. I'm gonna use a knife just to keep my hands clean, really. You should use a spoon. But just sort of work the yogurt in until you kind of form like lumpy, breadcrumby kind of texture there. There we go, like so. And once you've mixed it in as much as you can, it's kind of like, let me just try and show you this texture. It's kind of like, like that. Then the rest is just made up with water. Right, that doll is pretty much there. So, before I move on to that, as I said, halfway through the dough, we're gonna add a load of spinach. Sorry, it's still in the bag. I didn't throw any, I didn't buy it fresh. Just, uh, so good, two big fists full of spinach, because it cooks down to almost nothing. Loads of that in there. And that will, that will actually release some moisture as well, some liquid. So it's gonna make the dal runnier again. So keep it going. Even if your dal looks like it's there, like a pizza sauce, keep it going because you will get more moisture out of this now. Just gonna work that in a little bit. And then I'll come back to it in a sec and work it some more. Work that dal through, sorry, work that spinach through. So we're really going to be a banging healthy pizza, this. Okay, back to the dough. So we've got our ingredients mixed together. I'm just going to add a little bit of water. As I always say, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. So start with a little bit, work it with your hands, and then really start to push it together, get to the bottom, feel around for the really dry stuff at the bottom. Because if you don't do that, you'll end up with really wet dough at the top. And then when, as you think you, it's ready, you'll find this dry spot. So that's working together, it's quite nice. Let me go for a bit more. That's probably gonna be enough water. Probably went a bit overboard there, and I've probably made a prime example of not adding too much too quickly, which is all right. All we have to do to correct it is just add a bit of flour back in. I slipped, yeah, that is too wet now. Not to worry. I'm just trying to clean some of that off my hands. Good. Okay, so we're going to go a bit more flour just to bring that back. Hopefully, I've got enough for rolling out. Hopefully, should be all right. There we go. To be honest with you, a nice soft dough is going to make for a better naan anyway. All right, so dough is looking good. It's starting to come together as a dough now. Kind of what we want. Still a bit sticky on the fingers. It doesn't help that I've got stuff all over my hands and there's nowhere, well I have got a little uh, place to wash my hands behind me, but I'm going to try and restrain from that for now. So, this table, this is spitting with rain, this table, you can see this table, see what's going on? No, you can't, can you? I'll do it here. Sorry, I didn't realise that was out of shot. There we go. So, those here. I'm gonna tilt the camera down slightly so you can see what's going on. Hopefully that's better. Right, okay. So I'll work at the top of the top. Oh, this part of the table's best, yeah? Okay, so, wash my hands if you don't mind. And it's always worth, when you're working with dough, to go and wash your hands halfway through, get the, the bulk of it off, uh, and then start we we'll start again with fresh hands because it just makes life easier. Okay, right. fresh hands, fresh hands and a fresh dirt. Right, still the dial. So all that spinach is now broken down into that. At this stage, you could have to add the rest of the bag if you wanted. If you wanted it really sort of spinachy, I might save a little bit to go on the pizza fresh. Right. So, flour down on the table. I'm just going to work that dough a little bit. Just, just a bit of kneading. 
just to stretch the fibres of the dough. We'll get a nice light and fluffy naan off the back of it. There we go. Just work that a little bit more. Probably should do it, work it for a few more minutes than I'm going to, just because time restrictions. A bit more flour. Okay, get rid of that bowl now. A bit more space. All right, that's wicked though. Okay. Put that to one side. So now we're almost ready. In fact, what we need to do now, just in preparation for this, is just get the toppings ready. So the two toppings, and there's not too many, because I don't like to overload pizza. We're gonna go with our first of all some chili. Then we go, I've got a red chili and a green chili. And I'm just gonna slice those into nice thin little circles straight across the middle of the chili and these are just going to stud the top of the pizza give it a bit of color vibrancy a bit of heat should look great that's one red and one green slice those up almost look like the jalapenos. You know, like, but I think green chili, like, not pickled, just fresh green chili. You can't see my face now, can you? It's probably a good thing. Um, I'm gonna keep it here so you can see what I'm gonna do there, and then I'll move the camera back up when we're going to cook, cook for the pizza. Um, so we've got, green chili is, like, prevalent in a lot of Indian cooking. My favorite breakfast of all time while I was out in India, so I now call the Indian omelet, I make it all the time, and it's literally just, Red onion fried really hard so it's crispy and green chilies in an omelette. It's with loads of salt, it's unbelievable. The second top I'm going to use is something called paneer. So if you haven't heard of this, it's an Indian cheese. Uh, it can be cooked and it doesn't melt. It's a little bit like halloumi in that sense. It's, it's kind of fairly bland, it gives a nice texture and it has got very nice flavour as well. It's very, very, um, it's almost like a, a mild halloumi, nowhere near as salty. So I'm going to put that into some like nice little rib ribbons. Chop those up like that. So I've got those. So those, those all I'm putting on this pizza because the, the most of the flavour for the pizza we're going to get from that dal, because that dal is packed full of all the that, um, onion and all the spices means that that's where, you know, the base is where the flavor's at in this one. So right, we're gonna go for making a pizza now. We're nearly there. So we're gonna go for a bit of flour on the board and we want like a tennis ball sized piece of uh, dough. And we're just gonna, I haven't got a, any kind of, um, rolling pin or anything like that. I'm just gonna get a floured, floured base and just work it out with your hands because this is a naan bread. It's gonna be thicker than a pizza base. When we make pizza, we want it to be kind of like really thin. It doesn't need to be for this. We want nice those nice big fluffy edges that we're, you know, we know and love when we have a naan bread. So just gonna work it with your hands. Don't let it get too thin. Put it onto the board and you can just finish it by just using your fingers to kind of even it out a little bit flip it over any gaps that emerge just squeeze it back together it's really really simple so there we have the base i'm going to make sure that there's loads of flour underneath this because i've got to get it onto a paddle and get it into this oven if you're doing this at home I suggest you flour your uh, baking tray and then do the whole 
like building of the naan pizza on the baking tray because if you do it on the side and then try and transfer it you're going to find it's going to go all over the shop so just do that right so we've got a nice base there down and this is where the dal comes in so that can come off there it's actually really hot that's perfect consistency now so we're just going to get a spoonful of dal into the middle of that pizza spread it out and another spoonful but don't overload it because it's going to mean that the dough is really soggy okay so just work that dal to the edges but leave a crust leave a good centimetre and a half you know to an inch that kind of uh, size crust Okay, that's that. So we're going to go in with the, uh, well, in fact, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to grab some just normal cheese. This is just cheddar, grated cheddar. Believe it or not, curry and cheese works incredibly well. And it's not something you see that often, but those flavors really do work. So we're going to go for a little bit of cheese, normal cheese. Then I'm going to stud it with some, well, I'm going to put some paneer on there. So we're going to go for four bits of paneer. Plenty. Like that. And then we're just going to stud it with some chilies as well. One or two more. Get a bit of colour and vibrancy, cross it, and then we're just going to finish that. Always finish it with a little bit of oil, just a little drizzle, just to help the cheese on the top cook. And then we're going to fire that into this oven. So I'm just going to get the door off. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, I've never ever used this oven before, and so how long this is going to take. I don't know, but I expect just a couple of minutes. I hope just a couple of minutes. No pressure. So, paddle underneath. Well, that's gone all right. Pan on smooth. It's a good start. I'm going to fire that in right towards the back. Okay, I'm going to put the lid back on. Sorry, the door back on. And we'll check it in about a minute. And it might be that we need to spin it round. Normally you spin your pizza round sort of 45 degrees, 90 degrees as it cooks. Okay, I'm just looking, I'm having a peek, sneaky peek in there and I can see that the cheese is already bubbling. I expect it's somewhere between three and 400 degrees in there, which is what you want for your pizza oven. Uh, it's cooking really nicely, puffing puff up. And obviously the one side is closer to the fire than the other. So this is why we need to spin it around. So we're getting close to that point, I would say. I can actually see crusts are browning already. It's cooking faster than I expected, which is really good. Really, really good news. So we're going to get that door off. A little bit heavy, this. Woo! Hi! And hot. Right, pizza needs to be spun. Whoa, caught that just in time. Go back in. I'm going to leave the door off. It's that hot, and it's needed. I reckon another 25 seconds and this is going to be ready. And just in time, we've got somebody here to eat it. And who is it? No other than man. The main man himself. Hi Stuart all. Phillips. Right, Stu, we've got this pizza made. Stuart saying hello. Oh, that looks good. What are we going for that? That's bloody marvellous, that is. It's right, isn't it? That's great. Yeah? There we go. I thought it'd be worth getting him over. Huh. I've never made that before, but I can't <laughs> wait to have a go. Should we have a little slice? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? yeah? Cool, man. <laughs> so what do you think? So, basically what I've done here is made a, a real simple dal. Yeah. Um, red lentil dal yep. uh, with spinach. And then just loaded it up with some paneer, some normal cheddar and, and chilli. And that's it. 
on a naan bread base. Right. I'm not sure I'm going to burn this side, but this oven is awesome, mate. It's uh, you cook that in what, Great 45 seconds, 50 seconds. It's probably going to burn your face off trying to eat it, but there we go. So we'll slice that that way. See, so every slice, slice that into four, everyone gets a bit of paneer then. It's a wall. It is definitely warm. Right, verdict. I'm going to go in with you. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no yeast in this bake either. It's just baking powder, uh, yogurt, and then um, Yeah. Mm. That's a banger, isn't it? Great, yeah. Very tasty. Hey, <laughs> winner. So, give it a go at home. But more importantly, go out and have some food because these guys need you. You know what I mean? The hospitality industry is needing everybody to go out and have some food. So come here. Come and see us over the weekend. I'll be here on Saturday um, tomorrow. Yeah, and I won't be cooking. So don't come for my cooking. But he taught Gonna me. Be busy. He taught me so much. So honestly, <laughs> the food's amazing here. Get your asses down here. Enjoy it. Have a great weekend. See you I'm Shropshire Lad. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that jazz. Comment and I will see you on Tuesday. Not next Tuesday, because I know what that means. <laughs> Take care.